So it's been about two weeks since the game has been out. It's been one week since I beat the game. Oops. Okay, making sure my mic wasn't muted. <clears throat> one week since I beat the game. I did pl beat it on um, light. There's like very light, light, normal, hard, very hard, and so on. Um, and it's taken me like a week away from the game to really sit down and digest it. And now that I've, you know, allowed myself to read various articles and reviews and stuff like that about the game, because I avoided them mostly to avoid spoilers. Um, and it's, like I said, it's taken like a week for me to digest the game and everything that I just went through in the game. Um, and after reading reviews and articles and all kinds of stuff out, I wanted to do a review. And while I do the review, so you're not just staring at the same screen. And by the way, when you beat the game, you'll get this screen. Whereas when before you beat it, it's just the boat in the water. Um, which is basically to symbolize... Oh, spoiler warning. Spoiler warning. Actually, let me put this up before I even move forward. I'm going to um, put this in my broadcast settings. See if it'll allow me to do it. Um, no. I'll have to go back in and do it. Let me at least put in here that there's a spoiler warning. One minute. Bear with me here. I don't want people to get spoilers. Without, you know, without knowing they're going to get spoilers. Um, make that red. Okay. There we go. All right. So, this screen apparently is to show that um, Abby and Lev made it to their destination because they took off in the boat and now the boat is here and they made it to their destination. So, um, I'm going to go through and just kind of show you. I kind of did this in another stream, but I'm, so you're not staring at just the same thing. I'm going to go through and show this to you while I give you my review. This is not a paid review. It's my honest review. First off, the game... Now, I let me give you a quick background. I played The Last of Us, the first one, years ago. Um, and it is by far the best game I've ever played. It was like playing a movie. Um, it was the first console game I ever played. I went from PC gaming to that. And it was amazing. And... Not only did I play, I played it through on easy because of my hand-eye coordination problems. And I made it a personal goal, being disabled, I made it a personal goal to beat the first one on every single mode. So the, the easy, the normal, the hard, the very hard, and the survivor modes. And I beat it every single time. So playing it over and over and over in the same story, I got incredibly attached to the characters to Joel, to Ellie, even, you know, characters like Tommy and stuff. I got very emotionally attached to them, uh, which bravo to get somebody to be emotionally attached to a character in a game. You're doing your job right. Um, so when I got to this game, with everything happened, this, this was very emotionally tolling. And even now, when I think about it, and when I read articles and see videos and, and scenes and stuff, I still cry. So, and I will probably cry during this review because it, it's, again, it's an emotionally tolling game. So, let me pull up some artwork here. Um, oh, all right. Well, you can only view the things you unlock. As you play the game, you collect points. The more you play, the more points you get and you can unlock stuff. So, I've unlocked a few things here. All right, so a lot of people are really angry 
Hold on. Apparently I do. I thought I had some unlocked already. Before I continue with the review, I'm trying to figure out where's the stuff that I have. I've unlocked some stuff. Oh, I think I spent all my points on the models. The game models. I guess they put new ones out? I don't know. Oh wow, that's pretty awesome. Yeesh. All right. So, a lot this game's getting a lot of hate. It, it, people either love it or hate it. And um I loved it. I didn't hate it. And um the actress and forgive me, I can't remember her name. The actress that played Abby is getting, like, actual death threats. Which is ridiculous. Because it's a fictional character. And she did her job. She did her acting. And honestly, if people can't distinguish between an actress doing her job and a fictional character, then she's done a superb job at acting. Because you can't tell that it's not real. Um... Personally, I think the game is beyond genius. This is just revolutionary in the video game industry. Um, because this is not just a video game. And that's why I believe it's getting a lot of hate. I think that people are just used to, hey, let's get our guns and shoot them up and win at the end. And this game is not about that. This game takes you on a whirlwind of... Of a psychology trip that is just far beyond what the average human being video gamer can comprehend that's why it's so genius where do I even begin so people are mad because they killed Joel and I was devastated I'm you know I'm still devastated there's no way he can come back unless we're doing um, flashbacks, which I was so thankful for throughout the game because it allowed us to actually, you know, experience Joel. But uh, people are mad at that because they they can't see beyond that. So they kill Joel and they, you know, we're, we're like torn apart over it. But not only did they kill him, the way they killed him was just brutal and shocking. And they force us through that and then they force us to play his killer now the game is incredibly realistic the graphics are incredibly realistic you know the scenery is beautiful like beyond beautiful the even right down to the facial expressions and the game models and if anybody's ever worked in the realm of 3D modeling or video game design um, or any kind of digital artwork can certainly appreciate the uh, amount of talent that goes into making something to that level. So they make you play, or I'm sorry, back up. It's a realistic game. Well, they're handing us a big dose of reality. The game is trying to teach us a lesson about violence and revenge. We are getting a taste, you know, video games, it's all video games are. Violence, 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 violence. And I'm not anti-violence in video games. You know, I, I love them just as much as anybody else. I was one of the first fans of Mortal Kombat and, you know, but that's that's the point you know we love all this violence in a video game every video game is like bang 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 you know shoot them up beat them up and then win at the end and this game is just throwing in the face of all of that and it's trying to teach you the reality of what violence is Let me go to the next screenshot here and you see that in the brutal way that, that Joel is killed. 
And you see that in the facial expressions throughout the whole game. That was something that was just so disturbing to me, was the facial expressions that Ellie makes when she does her sneak kills. It was just, it just she cringes. And I hated Abby's sneak kills, the way she strangled them to death. And the game is designed to make you feel that way. Like, this is what the violence really looks like. So you're forced to play somebody that you hate. And then you're forced to face Ellie and, and try and kill Ellie, which you don't want to do. It is just pushing violence up in your face and the reality of it. But at the same time, you're, when you're playing Ellie, you're seeing just how much she is just losing grip with humanity. She is just letting herself go one step further and one step further. And you see how disturbing it is to her. And that's psychologically genius. I mean, to plan out a game and to plan out those tiny little details to affect that kind of emotional reaction from somebody is freaking brilliant. I mean, who thinks of that? Um, professional game designers, that's who. So you're, you're seeing how this revenge, how each step to getting her revenge pushes her further and further over the edge to where she kills a pregnant woman because her thirst for revenge is just relentless and you're forced to play Abby of course and then by the end of the game you're you've turned into Abby basically you've turned Ellie has turned into what Abby was and that's why she let Abby go you know, she's, she's out for revenge. Abby killed her father figure, just like, you know, Joel killed Abby's dad. Abby was out for revenge. Well, Ellie was out for revenge. And, you know, what are you supposed... You, you hate Abby. And everybody's pissed off that they let Abby go. Uh, they're pissed off because she killed Joel, but they're also pissed off because they let Abby go. Well, you hate Abby, but you want to you want Ellie to do exactly what Abby did it's it's a psychological whirlwind that they did to try and force you into that so you could actually feel what that violence and the revenge and everything did and it's it's not designed to make you enjoy the whole game through and then yay beat it in the end the game is designed to make you look at how you feel about the violence in the game and how you feel about the revenge and how you feel about the characters and like i hated playing abby but what you got to do it if you're going to beat the, the game it's i think that it's it was absolutely genius to tur basically they turned you on yourself in an emotional roller coaster through the game um and, and also, you know, they put that point in where um, Dina was pregnant and Abby was getting ready to kill her, where, you know, Ellie went, killed a pregnant woman to get her revenge. And then, surprise, surprise, you know, Lev, of course, was a voice of reason, but Abby decided not to kill a pregnant woman. So you can't be all pissed off at Abby and not be pissed off at Ellie. It just turns that whole thing on its head. Now, the other thing that I wanted to talk about was the whole LGBT thing, because a lot of people are all in a big uproar. People are all, before I even played the game, people were talking about, oh, it's too much social justice warrioring. Well, if you're anti-LGBT, then, then you can probably stop this video, my stream, whatever, right now. Not like ha not having a choice on not to kill or kill. Yeah, but that's the whole point. That was the whole point. They they were trying to teach you that revenge makes you, if you th that thirst for revenge. If you killed Abby, then you're no better than her, because she killed Joel. Abby killed Ellie's father. Joel killed Abby's father. Abby killed Joel to get revenge, because Joel killed her father. You know, you're, you're two identical characters. And if you had killed Abby, 
you know, you, you're forced to play a character that you hate. Like, I was gritting my teeth playing her because I didn't want to play her. Like, why do I want to make this bitch succeed through the game when I just want to walk her off a cliff? But if you're, you know, if you kill her, then you're no better than her. That's the whole thing that Naughty Dog's trying to teach you. They, that's why they force you to play her, so you can just feel that disdain for her the whole time. And then, you know, I guess they were hoping that more people would understand in the end why you let Abby go. But, um, so back to the LGBT thing. Um, it really bothers me that everybody was all uproar. Everybody was talking about, oh, it's too much social justice warrioring in the game. And, um, you know, I had heard all that and read all that before I played. And the whole time I was playing, I'm like, where's this social justice warrior crap I keep hearing about? Because there is none. There is, um, Ellie's gay. Of course, Dina's bisexual, either pansexual or bisexual. And Lev is transgender. So, let me get this right. People think it's a social justice warrior crap because the game has a couple gay characters in it and a transgender character? How is that social justice warrioring? To be honest, I feel like some of the situations in the game didn't go far enough when displaying things like that. But at the same time, I feel like they kind of intermingled it to where it was no big deal because it shouldn't be a big deal. You have gay people and transgender people around you every day, all day long, and you don't even know it unless they tell you. So why people got all in an uproar, and, and let's not forget, if you actually played the first game, we all knew Ellie was gay in the first game. Bill was gay in the first game. Like, this is not a new thing for The Last of Us to have any kind of gay characters. And, um, yeah, I am I am happy too. And, you know, like, like I said, the first Last of Us, um, we knew that Ellie was gay in the first Last of Us. And, um, Left Behind. We played the whole Left Behind with her and, and her, um, girlfriend or partner love interest um and then you know in the game we find out that bill was gay and i like how you know i read an article today about uh, how somebody was really angry that they used lev's birth given name and um I have, how do I want to word this? I have transgender friends. I've had transgender friends. And while I can understand and know why that uh, it's upsetting to use a birth given name, let's go back and look at some of the other extra stuff. Um, I think that the situation that Naughty Dog used in doing so was very different. They were portraying, in the scene, um, in the scene, Abby and Lev are trying to battle some scars. And the scars call out Lev's birth given name, Lily. And basically, the whole scene is to show you the disrespect behind that. <laughs> that how people in society, no matter how a transgender person feels, are just not willing to accept how they feel. And it was very subtle how they portrayed Lev. To, and they portrayed Lev where it wasn't a bunch of social justicing. It wasn't all in your face. Like I said, I think they could have done a little more with that. But why people are all bent out of shape about Lev is beyond me. About any of, you know, the LGBT. Like I said, if you had played the first game, if you had learned anything about the first game, you would have known better if you don't like gay people. 
to not get the second game. Um, so, yeah. Uh, as, oh, the uh, another thing that I wanted to actually let me come down and bring it bring her up. This is something else that I wanted to talk about. Tons of people. It was a huge thing on Twitter where people were saying that Abby was transgender. Here's Abby. This is actually a younger Abby. Let me pull up older Abby. People were saying that Abby was transgender. Um, come on. Hold on. I lost it here. There. I'm going to view this. And the reason why people were saying it is because she is kind of flat-chested and really muscular. And let me just say, I love that Naughty Dog did a female game character that looks like this. As much as I dislike the character of Abby, every single female on the planet is not hourglass shaped and all voluptuous and sexy. I mean, come on, we're in a dystopian world, you know, where where everything, the, the whole country's gone, where there's infected running loose, where it's kill or be killed in order to survive between each other, the different gangs that have developed, and the infected. So let me tell you right now, when women work out, their breasts look smaller unless they have implants. This is what happens when a female works out. And I think it's just amazing that a video game finally portrayed a female in a more realistic manner. She's not all hourglass shaped. She's healthy. She's, she works out. You know, if you're going to survive a woman with a big, big ass and big tits and a tiny waist with a bunch of makeup on is not going to survive in the world that The Last of Us is built around. This kind of chick is going to survive in that kind of world. And to call her transgender just because she's flat chested is just if you've done that, you suck. <laughs> you suck. There's a lot of flat-chested women out there, and they're self-conscious about it. Way to make them even more self-conscious about it by calling them a transgender person, which shouldn't be offensive in the first place. But um, there were so many people saying that this character was transgender that halfway through the game, I googled it to see if she was. Because I was like, I even made a comment on my stream like, you know, people are saying she's transgender, but I don't think she is. I think she's just, you know, a little flat-chested. <laughs> but, um, you know, I googled it, and of course she's not. But even if she was, so fucking what? So what? It's a character. She is a buff female character. What did you expect, Tomb Raider? <laughs> like... Thank you, Naughty Dog, for creating a realistic character where she doesn't have a ton of makeup, where she's not all concerned about the way she looks, where she's built the way a, a survivor in an army with the highest scar kill record should look like. So, yeah, I, I wanted to address that because that was just ridiculous, you know, that the People were making fun of her because of the way she looked. This, ooh, did we bust your sexy female game model stereotype out of the water? So, yeah, um, I think that the game is absolutely brilliant. A lot of people just don't understand. And, and for people to not understand... You're just, they're missing out on so much in the game. If all you think it's about is, is his death, that, oh, God, they killed off one of your favorite characters, then you are so missing out. I mean, 
one of the other thing didn't to keep playing after the ending i want to i hope they make a third one i want to keep i would love to be able to play tommy i would love to be able to uh like play tommy and um change it up with ellie or something like that because, you know, I, I love Tommy, too. I think it would be awesome if we got to play Tommy. But one of the things that I have yet to see anybody talk about, which I thought was just freaking another little tiny genius detail in the game. Through the entire game, um, there is DLC coming. That's what they did with the first one. Um, the, from what I understand, there's supposed to be a multiplayer. Same with the first one. But, so through the entire game, we are playing the guitar. I mean, the whole beginning of the game is Joel, at the end of the, the first game, Joel promises, you know, at the very end, he promises Ellie that they, uh, that he will teach her how to play guitar. So, in the beginning of this game... You know, we're still dealing with that. Hey, you know, I'm going to teach you how to play guitar. He brings guitar in and sings to her. And through the whole game, we are playing guitar. That is one, one of the things that Joel gave to her that she could carry through her whole life. Even after he's gone, she can sit down and play guitar and have him there in her heart. Because he taught her how to play guitar. And it's going to make me cry because it's so sad. And I can't believe people aren't picking up on this more. Abby bit her fingers off. And in the end, she goes to the farmhouse and it's empty. And she picks up the guitar and you're forced. Uh, how do people not recognize this? You're forced to sit and try and play guitar with missing fingers. She, the fingers on the fretboard. Her two fingers, she can no longer play guitar. Her revenge, her thirst for revenge to go after Abby so relentlessly and to, to, rather than just to let her go, to fight her the way she fought her in the end, she lost her fingers and she lost the one thing that she still had of Joel that she could carry with her is that ability to play guitar that he taught her. And she lost that. And that's one of the lessons I believe Naughty Dog is trying to teach you that you know, revenge is just loosely, useless. It gets you nowhere. But I, like I said, I can't believe more people haven't picked up on that. Um, it was so sad that, God, you know, at least she had the guitar. Through the whole game, at least she had the guitar. And now she can't play guitar. Yeah, it cost her everything. The game's meant to not have a happy ending. Because if it, you had a happy ending... You wouldn't learn the lesson of the game. That that violence and this thirst for revenge that pushes you over the edge of, of humanity where you're beating the living crap out of... Uh, hold on. My headset decided to shut down on its own. You know, she's beating the crap out of, like, Nora. She beat the living shit out of her. She beat her to death. With blood all over her. You know, like... Oh my god. My uh, headset is on the fritz. And, the, you know, you're, if you had got a happy ending, you wouldn't have learned that lesson of what the violence and the revenge that it's they're trying to teach you it's not worth it. And... Um, yeah, if you had beat, you know, had a happy ending, like I said, they're, they were trying to teach you that revenge gets you nowhere. Um, the violence, you know, it's a violent video game teaching you about violence. They didn't want you, they wanted you to walk away feeling 
like man, you know. Revenge, and I said it in the end of my stream, my last stream when I beat the game. Revenge leads to just nothing but emptiness. Look what, look what Ellie gave up. She lost her, her girlfriend or wife. She lost the baby. I mean, they, they didn't force you to carry that baby around during that whole section for nothing. They wanted you to feel that. They wanted you to feel what all this violence and revenge leads to. I mean, and again, you know, you would just turn into Abby. If you had killed Abby, you would have been just like her. You would have turned into what you hated. Hello, welcome to the stream. Um, I am going to be playing, um, I just wanted to do this quick little stream thing to give my quick review, because I've had all these thoughts going in my head, like, you know, because there's so much hate, you know, people are, are just going to the level of just, you know, Joel being killed, and they're not looking beyond that, and I just wanted to do a quick review thing, but I am going to, when I finish this video up, I am going to um, start a new stream so that it's not bleeding into this little quick review. And um, I'm going to be playing Plus. I'm going to stream it as well. I plan on playing it just like I did with the first one. I plan on playing it on every level of difficulty. Now, when I play it through on Plus, um, is... When I play it on, on Plus, I'm going to be, throughout the game, I just can't get over the detail in this game model. Throughout the game, I'll be mentioning, like, some things in my own review now that I've played the game through once um, and can understand the, the pure, brilliant psychology behind it. I am going to make commentary through the next play around. Um, about the various things, my thoughts and reviews on the various parts of the game, um, just randomly. I've got to say, the game models, I mean, look at the detail in this model. She, this is Abby when she was hung out to die, and, you know, she's emaciated because months went by. But the, the sunburn peeling on her skin is just wow. The ligature marks on her wrists. I mean, I was just emotionally miserable through parts of the game. Like, I, I hated it, but I loved it because I, you know, as a, from an art aspect, it's just genius. And if people can't just get moved beyond Joel being killed to, to admire and respect what the game is about, because it's about more than just, hey, let's go out and kill bombies, um, then they're missing out. I cried throughout the whole thing. I mean, through the happy memories, which I was happy to have the happy memories. Through the happy memories, I cried because, you know, knowing that Joel is gone. Um, I cried on, on and off through the whole thing, through the whole game. I cried at the ending. I cried um, I, I cried throughout the whole game. It, it was a tough game. I mean, we're, we're in a, <laughs> a pretty shitty situation. Um, it was a tough game during the, the downtime. But I think that we need to look beyond the game, and, and I admire it. Like, it's, I mean, yeah, it didn't give me the happy, fuzzy feelings that I got with the first one. Um, because the first one, you're experiencing this relationship between Joel and Ellie. And um, the whole game is a feel-good game because of that. This game is not meant to be a feel-good game. Um... It was rough during during a time when, you know, we're all quarantined and kind of feeling like crap to begin with. But I'm blown away when looking at the different aspects from a more from a deeper level, a more psychological level, 
on a deeper level, the whole design of the game is more than just mindless, let's go kill a bunch of zombies and get to the end and win. Because, I mean, let's be honest, in the end of a, a real world like that, there's usually no happy endings. I mean, you've got warring factions. You've got infected. And so much time has gone by that you've got infected that... Let me find it. To, oh, I haven't unlocked... Yeah, you have infected that have mutated to the point of this thing. <laughs> it's not going to be all hunky-dory. I freaked out when I saw this. I was like, what the fuck is that? So, that is my quick review. I think a lot of people just don't get it. And I hope that the actress that plays Abby just brushes off the death threats because they're not worth the time. Um, yeah, zombie OG. <laughs> And I hope Naughty Dog brushes off all the hate. Because what they created, it's not what everybody, you know, everybody, it's not a, a feel-good game, but it's a masterpiece. Um, I, I actually also had to take the week-long break, because I want to play it again. I'm going to play it over and over, but it was so emotionally tolling, I had to take the week-long break before I could pick up the controller and try and play it again because that was just rough you know we I love Joel I was very emotionally attached to him and you know I lost him in like a heartbeat and I was I gasped to go back and watch my video of my reaction I like I had no idea that was coming I thought they were going to kill Dina and all the months and whatever leading up to the game I thought they were going to kill Dina and um yeah, so here, here it's like I've lost this this character that I've grown emotionally attached to, and I don't even have time to recover from it. I've got to play the game unless I don't want to beat the game. So it was rough. I had to take a week to kind of collect myself before I play it again. Um, I'm hope, and there was a lot of sections of the game that I missed. A lot of areas. Um, where if you went the right way, if you went to the place you're supposed to go to to proceed to the next area, you couldn't go back and re-explore what you missed. So, and of course, the first time you play through, you never know which direction is the right direction to go when you've got multiple choices. So I missed large chunks of, of the game because of that, where I didn't get to go back and explore. Um, so I'm looking forward to checking that out. Like in, the, in Seattle... Um, I, I went to the bank and I saw a bunch of infected and I'm like, all right, hold up. I'm going to go up to this other place and try and get supplies first and then come back to the bank. So I didn't go through the bank and I didn't go and explore the houses and buildings down in that area because I wanted to go up further north, the streets up north and get supplies from there. And when I did that, I couldn't go back. I couldn't go back and explore, so I missed that whole section of the town that I'm looking forward to going back and exploring. Um, and I want to get more points. My goal is to unlock all of the game models and stuff. The more you play, the more points you get. And when you get points, you can unlock all these game models and all the artwork and stuff. I was going to... Uh, and apparently there's um, people that, when you're Abby, that you could go talk to. Like, you could go and talk to her. I missed all that. I was walking around, and somehow I missed it. Oh, my God. What is my headset doing? Um, so I'm looking forward to going back and seeing all that, too. But um, I was going to do this quick review with the artwork, because I got... Uh, one of the higher versions that gives you the artwork and the um, soundtrack, but because of the copyright, they don't let you do that. Oh, this is something else I want to add real quick. Um, I wasn't a fan of Mel, this character, 
but I also want to give props to Naughty Dog for making her not look typically female. Dina is the only character that's like typically female with the curves and, you know, the pretty hair and all that. But we've got a female who's not like big, huge tits and not a tiny waist. Of course, she's pregnant, of course. You know, short hair and so on. She's, she looks like a regular old female. Again, just like with Abby, I love that Naughty Dog put every day, and she's got a mole and everything, put every day looking people in, rather than continuing this whole, hey, let's have 10 pounds of makeup and big tits and a big ass and an itty bitty waist in a, um, in a gameplay area, a game world area where somebody like that probably isn't going to make it. Yeah, she's got short hair and everything. So, I love the characters. Their characters are more realistic. Show some of these other game models. They look like people who would be living in that game world. The details on these models are amazing. Which one is this? Oh, this is Yara. At the aquarium. Uh, do, oops, I didn't mean to hit back. Oh well. Alright, I'm going to end this stream. Um, that was my review, my quick review. I think the game was brilliant. It, it was depressing and emotionally tolling and a very difficult game to get through. It played on fears and had a lot of jump scares and uh, subtleties, but I'll be noting on those on my next playthrough. But I think it was, you know, from a, a mental and psychological, a much deeper aspect than let's just kill a bunch of zombies. It's brilliant. Yeah, I still love the game. I mean, like I said, it's it's a hard game to play <laughs> emotionally. It's it's a depressing struggle to play, but it's it's a beautiful game. Absolutely beautiful. And I think it's it's brilliant to be able to affect people uh, in the ways that they do and get the subtleties across that they do is just brilliant level game design. Your everyday Joe can't do that. It's not just about the story. To to evoke the kind of emotional things that they evoked in this game is brilliant. All right. I'm going to stop this stream, and I'm going to start a new one, and I'm going to start playing um, with the next difficulty level. Um, I played it on light. Let me see what the options are. I can't remember, is it under accessibility? Wow, they have a motion sickness thing. I didn't even notice that. Which one is it under? I can't remember which one it's under. I played it on, I didn't want to play it on very light. That would be too easy. And honestly, light was too easy. What is it under? Oh, it might be. Oh, okay. Hold on. No. Well, now I can't find it. I plan on playing it hard or um, Survivor. I don't know. I might start playing it on that. I just can't. Is it under controls? I can't remember where the setting's at. Unless you have to go through in the actual game. Alright, I'm going to end this stream. I'll find it on the next stream. So if you want to watch me play, just hop on the next stream. I just don't want this, the review, to bleed into actual gameplay. Um, but I will be giving little bits of reviews throughout the gameplay on the next one. So, um, see you on the next stream. Sorry, my cat's jumping in front of the camera. Here in just a couple minutes. Thanks for watching. <laughs>